Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, we are going to talk about creating arrays that contain objects. Okay, so what we're going to specifically deal with is how we can define an array of objects, that is creating object arrays. Then we're going to talk about how we can initialize the object arrays and what the implications are for the constructors that are defined for those objects. And then we'll finish off with uh, discussing how we can access objects uh, that belong to an array or that are stored in an array using dot notation. Okay, so let's talk about how we can create an array of objects and how we can initialize them. Okay, so Objects can be the elements of an array. So in this first example right here, what I have is I've created an array named F that has 20 elements. Well, what's the data type of those elements? Well, data type is foo, right? And so foo is the name of a class. And so this is gonna create an array of foo objects. Okay, now when we do this, the default constructor for each object in the array is going to be used when that array is defined. So as soon as this line right here executes, well then I'm going to have 20 constructors or 20 default constructors execute, right? Because the array is 20 elements long, so we got 20 objects in that array, so we're going to have 20 constructors uh, execute. Now, if we want to, right, and this is for default constructors. Now, if we want to invoke a constructor that's going to require us to pass it arguments, then we're gonna to have to use an initialization list. Okay, so take a look at this second example really quickly. And what's going on with this is that I've got a three member initialization list, right? I've got three initializers in here, eight, six, and seven. So this is gonna create an array of foos that's three elements long, and eight is gonna be passed to the one parameter constructor for element zero. Uh, six is going to be passed to the one element constructor for the object in element one. And then seven is going to be passed to the one element, or excuse me, the one parameter constructor in element two. Okay. So if the constructor is going to require multiple arguments, then we're going to have to do something a little different. Okay. We're going to have an initialization list that's going to look like a lot of function calls. So with this example here, I've got another array of foo objects that's getting created. You can have three elements. And I've got three initializers in my initialization list here, right? And so with this initialization list, what I'm saying is, is that I want to invoke the two parameter constructor for each element of my array or, or for each object in each element of my array. So element zero is going to have its two parameter constructor in both with eight and six being passed to that constructor. Element one is going to have its two parameter constructor invoked with seven and five being passed to it. And then element two is going to have its two parameter constructor invoked with three and zero being passed to it. Right now we don't have to call the same constructor for each one of the objects in the array. Uh, for example, we can mix, right? So here we see that I've got three initializers. I've got uh, the first initializer, which is just an integer. Then I've got the second initializer that looks uh, like that function call. And I've got a third that's just back to being an integer again. So in this case, the first object in the array at element zero is going to have eight passed to its one parameter constructor, the second element that object is going to have six and seven passed to its two parameter constructor. And then the third element in the array, uh, the object being stored there is going to have five passed to its one parameter constructor. Okay, so how do we access objects in an array? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to combine the dot notation and the array notation together to be able to uh, access the individual objects and then execute or call their methods. 
right? So we're gonna reference the object just like any other array element. We're gonna use our subscript, and then we're gonna call the methods, those member functions, by using the dot operator, right? So here's a couple examples, right? So first example, first line right here, what do we got? Well, what I'm doing is I'm accessing the second element of the array, right? Subscript one. Okay, so that's gonna give me the second object that belongs to that array. Now what I wanna do is I wanna execute its setX method. So I'm gonna do that by applying the dot operator, combining the two, the array notation and that dot operator notation together. So this is gonna invoke the setX method for the second object of the foo array that's at subscript one, and I'm gonna pass it uh, 88, right? So second example, second line, doing the same thing. I'm just now invoking the getX method that belongs to the second object of my F array, right? Which is at subscript one. Okay, so let's tie this all together with a example, okay? So right hand side here, you can see that I have a class already written, ready to go. And in this class, I have a stupid little class that's just gonna store an integer, just to make the example uh, easy to follow along with. And as part of uh, its data attributes, just single variable, and x, its public interface has got three constructors, a mutator, and an accessor, right? So the constructors, the default constructor right here, just gonna initialize x to zero. Right? The first overloaded constructor is just going to set the data attribute x to its parameter. And then the second overloaded constructor is just going to find the sum of its two parameters and then assign that to x. Right? And then set x is a simple setter method that sets x to its uh, parameter. And then get x is just a, a an access or a get method that's gonna return the contents of X, right? So keeping it simple for the purposes of this example, okay? So let's go ahead then and create an array of foos, right? So if I wanna create a array that has say um, five foos in it, right? then I'm gonna create an array just like I would any other array, but this time I'm using class foo, that's gonna be my data type. So its data type is foo as opposed to, you know, int or double or, you know, something like that. But notation, syntax, same. Okay, so we'll call this array f and it's gonna have uh, five elements, okay? So this creates my foo array, right? That's an array of objects. And when that happens, all the default constructors are going to uh, execute, right? So when that happens, I'm gonna have five objects, and each of their X's are gonna be initialized to zero because again, this default constructor is gonna execute, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and compile this and run this. And um, just to prove to you that that works, how about I create a loop here? Right. And then I will also demonstrate using that dot notation, right? So for each array, or excuse me, for each element in the array, we'll call its uh, accessor, right? its get its get x method, and we'll put that on the screen for you to see. Okay, so I'll go ahead and compile it and run it. Okay, there you go. So five objects, five zeros. Okay, now I could, instead of creating an array that's like this, I can go ahead and use an initialization list to um, invoke the, I guess you could say not default constructors, right? That is to say, the argument accepting constructors, right? So I'll create a second array of foos here and 
I'll call this one G. I'll go ahead and make it size elements long as well. Um, but this time, I'm going to need an initialization list because I don't want to use the I do not want to use the default constructor here. What I want to use is the one parameter constructor, right? Remember, I have as the first overloaded constructor this guy right here, right? And so that's going to require a single argument. Okay, so if I want to do that, then as long as there's just one parameter, I can just put the numbers inside the initialization list as if it were any other type of array, right? And then I will go ahead and have another loop here so you can see the results of that. Okay. And you'll see what that looks like. Okay, let's go ahead and compile and then run, right? So first five zeros are the result of my F array. And then there's eight, six, seven, five, three. And that is the result of my second array. Okay, now, as I mentioned earlier, we can mix um, the types of constructors we want to use. Okay, so let me create yet a third um, array here. And this time, um, I'll just create an array that has three elements in it. Okay, and I'll implicitly assize it. And I'll do that by mixing up the initializers, right? So let's say that I want the very first object to have eight, and then I want to have the second object um, to use the two parameter constructor. Well, then I'm going to make what looks like a function call here, right? So I can say um, something like this, right? And then for the third uh, element, I want its constructor to be um, pass five. Okay, so what did I do here? Well, the first element is going to have its one parameter constructor invoked. The second element, that object in that element is gonna have its two parameter constructor invoked. And then uh, the third element's gonna have its one parameter constructor invoked. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. And show you that that did in fact work. And compile that and run that. We're going to see, you know, 8, 13, 5. Well, why 8, 13, and 5? Well, 8 is for the first object, 5 is for the last one. And then remember the definition of my overloaded constructor, my second overloaded constructor, was just to take the sum of its parameters and assign that to uh, x. And so 6 and 7, 13, so that's where uh, our 13 came from. And of course, you know, we could also, just to finish this off, just to round this off to match up with what I was talking about earlier, right? I could, just another example, I could use all of the uh, two parameter constructors if I wanted to, right? So I could do something like this. Oops. And I can do that, seven and five, and then three and zero. Okay. And remember, I ended up with initialization lists. Compiler doesn't care about white space, so I can just put them on separate lines if I want to. Okay. So let me go ahead and compile this. And go ahead and run it. Okay. Ooh, it would be useful if I actually printed out what I was going to show you, right? So you can actually see. Uh, the results. So let's do that. Okay. And I probably should name my array something else. Uh, so let's name it array J, right? Because I'm using I inside my for loop. So that should do it. Okay. So let's try this one more time. All right, so 14, 12, 3. Where did the 14, 12, 3 come from? Well, 8 and 6, 14. 
right? Seven and five, 12, three and zero, three. So first element had its two parameter constructor invoked. Uh, second element, the object that's being stored there had its two parameter um, constructor invoked and similarly for the last element in array uh, J. Okay, um, let's see, is there anything else here I wanna tell you about? Don't think so. I think that's everything that I need to point out because in this uh, example, what did we do? Um, went ahead and created an array of foos, showed you different ways of initializing the arrays, uh, mixing different types of constructors, and uh, also showed you how to use the dot operator to uh, access the objects, right? Or to, uh, to uh, invoke their functions to call the functions for the different uh, objects. And we used the subscripts to specify which object uh, we wanted to interact with. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered in this video. In this video, we took a look at an array of objects, or arrays of objects. Uh, we looked at how we can create the object arrays. We talked about how we can initialize the object arrays knowing the impacts of the different initialization methods on constructors and how they get executed. Uh, we also looked at how we can access the objects in the arrays by combining the subscript and dot operators. And then I wrote an example program for you uh, demonstrating uh, these things in action. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.